Pew here. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, more uh, chord fragments uh, using uh, only three notes out of a four note chord. Uh, last time I did this I did it on uh, string six, four, three. Uh, this time I'm going to look at strings five, three, two. So uh, I'm going to start off with an A7 shape at the first fret. Uh, two fingers, one finger on the E on the fourth string, and one finger on the C sharp on the second string, both at the second fret. And we have an E7 chord. I'm going to use the shape with all four fingers. Um, so all six strings, we've got an E, a B, an E, a G sharp, and a D. You know, on both of these chords, I'm going to throw out uh, string six and string one. So on A7, we now have a four string chord that has four notes. An A, an E, a G, and a C sharp. And we have an E7 chord on the middle four strings that has a B, an E, a G sharp, and a D. Um, so um, of two four string chords, two four note chords. Now, um, I'm going to turn that uh, A7 into uh, a movable shape. So I'll turn it into a C7. So I've got the first finger barring at string on string uh, five on middle C, third fret. That's barring across the third fret. Um, and we've got the middle four strings only. So I have C, G, B flat, and E. So we're going to throw out string number four. So we'll get a, a C, a B flat, and an E. So we'll have the one, the flat seven, and the three. We're going to take the E7 chord, and we're going to move it up uh, so that it's a G chord. So it will be on frets four, five, and six. So we'll have a D, a G, a B, and an F natural. We're going to throw out string four, so we'll have a D, a B, and an F. So on, uh, on the C7, we have uh, no fifth. We have a root, a flat seven, and a three. On the G7, we have a five, no root, uh, a three, and a flat seven. So if we take that uh, C7, if we lower the note on string number two, we get a C minor seven. C, B flat, E flat. Go back to the C7. If we raise the note on the third string, raise the B flat up to a B, that will be a, a major seven. So we'll have a C, a B, and an E, C major seven. So uh, from this one uh, parent shape, we can get these uh, a dominant sound, a subdominant sound, and a tonic sound. Uh, we can do the same thing on the G7. Um, we've got a G7. If we lower the third, that is the note on the third string. It's a little bit of a stretch, but there's our G minor seven. Uh, if we take go back to the G7, if we raise the note on the second string, that'll raise the F up to F sharp, we'll have a major seven shape. So once again, we can get the, the dominant sound, sort of a subdominant sound, and a tonic sound. Now, we might also need a minor seven flat five on the C chord the root on string five. Um, there is no fifth. So a C minor seven and a C minor seven flat five have the same fingering. So that's a little bit unintuitive. Um, the note that is different is the note that we're not playing. So it, uh, you have to keep track of it, but you don't have to play it. On the uh, G7, if we change that, to the G minor seven. If we want the flat five, we need to lower 
that um, uh, fifth string note, which is the fifth, down to D flat. So there's the flat five, the flat three, and the flat seven. Um, we might also need a diminished chord. So if we have the uh, C7, we'll lower the uh, three down to flat three. We'll lower the flat seven down to double flat seven. And uh, we'll have uh, a C diminished chord. C, B double flat, E flat. One, double flat seven, flat three. On the um, G7, we need to lower the three down to flat three. So B down to B flat, we need to lower the five down to flat five. And we need to lower the uh, flat seven down to double flat seven. So there's our diminished chord. The interesting thing is we actually moved every note down one fret, but the note that we're not playing, the G, the root is on the four. If we leave that behind, if we play that note, you can hear it changed from the seven to the diminished seven. So um, because these chords are incomplete, it's very important that you keep track of the note that you're not playing, particularly um, on the G um, because it's the root. So if you don't know where the root is, this is um, sort of like a, a word salad. It's very difficult to uh, figure out exactly uh, what chord you're on. Uh, uh, all of these shapes will have uh, more than one possible name uh, depending on what the uh, missing note is. So um, you've really uh, got to keep track of four notes even though you're only playing three. So we've got uh, two basic shapes that started as four note chords on the middle four strings. We turned them into three note shapes and then we did variations. If we take the uh, song Autumn Leaves in the key of E minor, we can uh, uh, plug these chords uh, into the song. So um, we're going to start on an A minor seven. We're going to use um, the, uh, the root four. The chord that was originally a G seven, if we move it up two frets, we would get an A seven. We make it a three note chord and we make it the minor shape. So we've got an A minor seven and then a D seven. It's from the other group. Then a G major seven and then the C major seven. So we, we alternated uh, groups, one chord from one family, one uh, the root five family, and then, uh, uh, then we'd have a chord from the root four family. Um, then um, we've got an F sharp minor seven flat five. So we'll be up at frets nine and 10. And then a B seven, and then an E minor seven. Goes again, A minor seven, D seven, G major seven, C major seven, F sharp minor seven flat five, B seven, E minor seven. Autumn Leaves is a thirty-two bar tune. It has uh, two A sections then a B section, then a C section. So the two A's are exactly the same. That's what we did. Um, uh, now we're on the B section, F sharp minor seven flat five to B seven to E minor seven, A minor seven to D seven to G major seven. Uh, then the C section will be F sharp minor seven flat five to B seven to E minor seven to E flat seven, D minor seven, D flat seven, C major seven. 
a different B7 than we've been using, and then the E minor 7. Um, we used two, two basic shapes here. We had uh, uh, started with an A7, turned it into a C7, turned it into a three, no three note chord, or a three string chord, it's a four note chord. Um, I recommend that for each of these chords, uh, you, you play the arpeggio. So for the C7, you would have a C, an E, that we're not playing in the shape, a G that we're not playing in the shape, a B flat that we do, and you have a C and another E. So we're out of that, those notes, we are taking three. We've got to have the root, well, we're using the root in this case. We need the flat seven, otherwise we don't know it's a seven chord. We need the three, otherwise we don't know if it's major or minor. We don't really need the five. So uh, we won't play it. On the uh, G7, we've got a five on the bottom, a three, and a flat seven. Notice that in this shape, which is a root four shape, we're not playing the fourth string, but that's where the root is. Um, we have the seven on uh, string two. On the other shape, we had the three on string two. And, and uh, we have the three on string three. On the other shape, we had the seven on string three. So each, each string is uh, responsible for, for one degree of the chord. So um, we've got a five, a three, and a flat seven. If out of, uh, out of one shape, we can get a lot of variations by moving one note at a time around. Um, but in order to know which note to move, you have to know uh, the number of each note. So uh, if you play the arpeggio, G, B, D, F, G, B, D, F, you can find one, three, five, flat seven. One, three, five, flat seven. So you'll know the number of each note. Uh, so uh, thank you for uh, watching this uh, video on uh, uh, three note chords on four strings using strings five, three, and two. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it makes you think a little bit about how you might uh, play chords. Uh, if you use these shapes, um, your bass player will, uh, will, will like you. He'll feel that, you know, you're, you're giving him a little respect. Uh, you're staying, staying out of his way a little bit. Feedback. Hopefully he will give you some uh, good, good feedback about that and may have uh, suggestions about how to, uh, how to play with a bass player and compliment him uh, and have him compliment you. Uh, it's it's uh, uh, easy to have uh, too many people playing too many low notes um, in, a, in a band uh, with a lot of chordal instruments. So I hope to see you uh, next week. Uh, we'll do another song. Thank you very much.